Okay, so when we're dealing with the, uh, the Hanbo or any of the stick and staff weapons, you have to remember initially that these are blunt weapons, which means we want to hit what part of the body? Bony parts of the body, right? So you're looking at uh, clavicle head, traditionally, in today's society, that will end you up in jail. Uh, back of the hands, elbows, floating ribs, shoulder blades, knees, ankles, sternum, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is get used to this one-third grip. There's, a, there's two traditional stances associated with this, and it's kind of this, and it's kind of this. I've never used this one for anything. So we're going to focus primarily here. You want one third grip and you want to be able to slide back and forth to different ends of the stick. One of the advantages of any of your stick and staff weapons is the distance. So if I'm here doing all my stuff in this range, I haven't really utilized the, the stick to its full potential. Whereas if I'm outside of his range, I want to make the most of the use of the stick. Thank you. So um, I want you to start off just in a neutral stance, bad guy oriented this way, and I want you to just get used to going to each end of the stick. I want you to think about a downward X as if you were going for collarbone and collarbone. Watch my footwork. As I strike down, whatever side the tip of that stick is on, that's the same side as my lead leg. I can walk forward as I do this. I can walk backwards as I do this, but there's also a switch step that you use based on the distance. So if somebody is there and, and he's right there and I need to cover some distance, I can take a step and reach my target. If I'm here and he's coming in on me and I have to make some space to reach my target and step back. The switch step is that kind of in between distance where maybe I'm here, back foot comes to the front foot and then the front foot switches. So I'm not going forward or back. My distance, if I start off on that line, I finish on that line, cool? So the first drill I want you guys to do is just your basic X pattern, just getting used to sliding to the end of the stick here here, do it walking forward, do it walking back, and do it with a switch step. Okay, so one of the things I want you guys to think about is you can't get your hands too close together. Once your hands are too close together, you lose the leverage when you're making, making an impact. So when I said one third of the stick, when we're talking Hanbo, I wanna keep about that much. So even if I'm sliding here and I finish, I'm keeping still about a third, so when I make contact, I have body weight behind it, but I still have structure. If my hands are too close, even with body weight, you'll get this kind of bounce and you just won't have the structure to deliver. So that should a little bit answer kind of what you were talking about. Um, as you get comfortable, just moving back and forth, forward, back, left, right, and sliding up and down the stick, I want you to do this pattern. Um, John, let me just get you to stand here for a minute. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be practicing attacking on the diagonals first. So it's collarbone, collarbone. Now I'm going for either rib or elbow. So this is horizontal, horizontal. Then I'm going for uh, straight down the top. Traditionally, your showmanute strike would be down the front of the face. The last inch of the stick, just basically hitting right through the front of the face. More realistically, maybe I'm hitting the top of the head, maybe I'm hitting the front of the face. If he has things in his hands, this downward strike would be into the forearms, back of the hands, or the thumb. Very often the thumb is a target because it can't be armored. So if you were dealing with a person traditionally that had armor on, if you take the wrist out, it's a lot harder for them to hold on to things, right? So it's going to look like this. Diagonal, diagonal. Cross, cross. Down, up. Now when I'm striking up, I've heard some ridiculous things on what we're striking at when we strike up. Could this be a groin shot? Maybe. Um, in my experience, I don't think I've ever seen 
the opportunity to really get that when you're dealing with these kinds of weapons. I would say if something's in their arm coming into the, uh, the bottom of the forearm, uh, kind of coming up into the ribs, especially the floating ribs, chin getting up under here is all probably a little more realistic than the groin because most people aren't going to stand here and just be an anatomically correct target for you. Does that make sense? Okay, so stay right there for a second, please. With two hands on the stick, doing the uh, one-third method, it's going to be diagonal, diagonal, horizontal, horizontal, down, up, and the last one is just straight in. We'll give you some other options on this later. Okay, so again, um, blunt weapons, predominantly what you're going to be doing is hitting. These are very traditional setups for a lot of the very traditional techniques that's associated with the system that we practice for this. Uh, we will be modifying all of them, but not to the degree that we're trying to make them modern and useful, but uh, just so they make a little more sense. One of the problems that you have is a lot of this stuff came from traditions that are many years old, sometimes hundreds of years old, and all it takes is for one person to forget to teach something correctly and then forever it doesn't work and everybody just goes around pretending it does. So we'll make a couple of modifications and there'll be some that I'll just say, I don't think this has any sort of uh, modern adaptation at all. So we're back to our strikes. Once you guys finish that warm up striking sequence, what I want you to do then is repeat the exact same sequence, but now with the stick. Don't be all the way at the end of the stick because that puts a lot of torque on your wrist. You want a little bit of a counterbalance. If you were using a shorter stick, like something uh, 20, 22 inches, something like that, you can be all the way at the end of the stick, especially if you're using uh, something like bamboo or time that doesn't have any weight to it. But these, you don't want all that weight in motion going to your wrist. So you want a little bit of counterbalance. So then you're gonna do the exact same sequence. Here, here. Notice I'm not leaving my hand out there, right? I'm trying to keep my hand back. Uh, I'm going across, across, um, down, up. The up is usually gonna be a little bit of a diagonal, uh, but you guys can play with that and just see what feels good. So one time through with your one third grip, and then one time through with uh, single hand grip. Okay, next piece of the warm up is going to be looking at just the basic striking and blocking with this weapon. It's not very complicated. So for now, my partner's going to start with just the basic overhead uh, showman each strike. Boom. So that's the target that he's looking for. First thing I want to do is get offline, and I'm going to shift to one third of the stick and use that whole end of the stick to deflect his weapon. So as he comes in, I'm here. Diagonals is going to be exactly the same. I'm here. I'm here. So what's more important than making contact with the stick is getting your body out of range. Start there. Okay, so one, one thing that came out of that drill right there, um, can I borrow you for a second? What we saw was uh, Shomenuch and then stop in the center. As one person was attacking, another person tried to clear this weapon and they did it like this, leaving themselves open. You're always contending for space and you're always trying to control the center. So it doesn't matter whether it's a traditional weapon or something that's more practical. You want to contend for the center. He comes in and strikes. I move his weapon off and now there's something between me and the adversary. He's going to have to deal with this before he can get to me. So I don't want to clear it all the way over here. I can even bounce his stuff out of the way and I can take center. Go ahead. And I can move from right there and I dominate the middle. So keep that in mind as we play with this. So the next piece that we're going to take a look at is horizontal strikes left and right as if they were striking for the elbow or the floating rib. Now, if I try to do my one third block when he's coming in fairly level, it's really hard, maybe I get lucky, but what you'll see most often is something like this, or glancing blows, 
where things don't actually stop the other thing. So here's what we're gonna do is in close proximity here, I wanna go maybe a little wider because I'm gonna use the center of the stick to block. So he comes in, I'm right there. This needs to be nice and close and I need to not hit his stick with my uh, knuckles. And he does the other side and I'm right there. Okay, so one other point that just came up a second ago is we had a person, grab a stick please. Uh, we had somebody that was doing a horizontal block and I'm gonna show you how you can do it wrong. So he's coming in here and ah, my top hand um, is, is technically my back hand. Let's come closer so we can see this. So if I'm here and here, this is my far hand on top, which is what I want. Again, this is my near hand. The problem here is when I start to move into follow on techniques, I don't have as much space. So watch this. From there, I have a lot of space to move in, do whatever, attack the knee, whatever. 